All right. Psalm, Psalm. Why did I say Psalm? First Corinthians 16. We want to, we're going to read down through to verse 24, then back up and I, um, yeah, I wanted to get in, even though really not going to look at some of these last verses. Got to get in. Those last verses are so great. So we'll read right down through, but we'll start in chapter 15 and verse 58, uh, verse 58, and then into chapter 16. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. We mentioned Wednesday night, it's quite the transition there, from 1 Corinthians 15. I was just listening to a message that Barrick sent me this week, and it's, uh, it's one of these, you know how Barrick is, this is just really scholarly, scholarly. I was like, wow, Barrick, this is really interesting. Uh, how do you listen to these scholarly... Skull, it was a uh, like a apologetics class lecture. I take it it was at some college somewhere, and just defending the resurrection of the Lord and against skeptics. It was, uh, very interesting. Uh, but one of the things he said in passing in his lecture is that First Corinthians fifteen. We were talking about how important it is because uh, it, it defends the resurrection of the Lord. And he said that in all his um, dealings, debates, and skeptics, scoffer, that this is the key chapter, 1 Corinthians 15. You know, it all hinges on the resurrection. It's awful interesting that the big shift here, you, uh, this powerful, powerful passage on the resurrection, and all of a sudden, just immediately goes into taking a collection. Well, well, we'll mention that again. We mentioned it Wednesday night. Uh, verse 2, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. When I come, whoms, uh, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. I should tell you what we're going to zero in on this morning is making plans. Making plans. This passage of scripture is Paul just laying it all out before the people, what he's planning on doing. And as we... Make plans. The message is making plans for 2022. Making plans to serve the Lord this year. And just some, and, and, and really I narrowed it down because there's so much in this passage of scripture, uh, but some lessons for making plans. And so Paul says, uh, plan on coming. Don't know how it's all going to work together. Verse 4, and if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. And we mentioned Wednesday night, we looked at, he didn't make it through, uh, and it was explaining. Verse 6, and it says, and it may be that I will abide day and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. So I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me. 
for I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong, that all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of, how do you say that word? You know, now you can Google, and you, they'll give you the proper pronunciation, right? No. You Google that, and they'll give you about eight different pronunciations of that word. Uh, the two most popular were Achaia, Achaia, and Achaia. I think I'll go with Achaia. You can make your choice. And that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. What a powerful verse. This house of Stephanus. That ye submit yourselves unto such, and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. That is, just working together. Uh, others are working, working together, helping out those that are working for the Lord. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus, and Fortunatus, and Achaia, uh, no, Achaicus, Achaicus, for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. Don't you get like getting those salutations from friends, Christmas cards this time of year. Isn't it a great thing to greet? It's a biblical thing to greet one another. They say, oh, I don't want to do those Christmas cards. Ah, oh, you're missing the opportunity to be a blessing. All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another with a holy kiss. The salutation of me, Paul, with my own hand. That makes me think, uh, there's Christmas cards on the table there. I think Hilde and Grant, when they were here, I think they put them out there. And then there's bread out there, I believe that Haley made. Then my wife put out uh, something for each family, I believe, that she has out there this morning. Verse 22. What a way to end the book. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, Maranatha, which means, you know, a curse when the Lord comes. We want to be loving the Lord. Loving wouldn't be great. You hear this said every new year, but it's so true. Wouldn't it be great if the Lord came 2022? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, making plans for 2022, we looked at this passage Wednesday night because weeks ago, before COVID struck and all the cancellations and different things, uh, we had looked at, we're talking about the will of God, and we looked at how God led Abraham's servant, he led him in minute detail to find a wife for Isaac. And it seemed like all the ducks lined up right in a row. And he say, and we were talking about God does lead through circumstances. Well, the tricky thing is, is you better be praying and walking with the Lord. You don't know when those circumstances are going to fall in a row. You don't know when they're going to line up. You don't know when something's going to happen. It's like, wow, we know the Lord did that. We know that's God's leading. But you, uh, the servant heads out, just trusting the Lord, and then the Lord lines things up as he's obeying 
and doing what he's supposed to be doing. That's how it is in all of our lives. But this passage of scripture we look Wednesday night is how there's so many uncertainties. So many uncertainties. Uh, we said that Paul didn't know the exact plans for picking up this offering that was going to be taken, this collection that was taken. He didn't know who's going to deliver it. He didn't know who they were going to approve by their letters, who might be going, and whether he was going with them or not. He didn't know his accommodations uh, for the winter. In verse 6, it said, well, he didn't know when he was going to pass through Macedonia, but he said, I am going to pass through Macedonia. He didn't know uh, whether he's going to spend the winter with them. Uh, he didn't know a lot of things going on. It seems like he knows less than he knows. And we talked about this. Uh, he didn't know when he was going to see them, if the Lord would permit uh, for him to try. When he didn't know so many things. And as you get down the passage, uh, he's hoping that uh, Timothy will come and, and help out. And Apollos, he wanted Apollos, but Apollos didn't. Uh, he couldn't make it, right? It, uh, it says his will was not at all to come at this time. He just told Paul, no, I'm not. It's not. He just made it clear he wasn't coming. Um, all the things going on, all these uncertainties. Uh, we want to look this morning, we're looking at this passage and thinking about making plans. Making plans for 2000. 22. You know, making plans, making plans can have a huge impact, giant impact. Uh, in Sunday school, Barak uh, mentioned a little verse that really helped to shape the world. Little teeny verse. You know what that verse was? That is that David, how did it put it? David uh, he made a, a law or put into practice that because Jonathan, Jonathan used the bow, that all the children were going to be taught to use the bow. Well, that's pretty simple. David says, we're going to make it a plan. We're going to plan on this in our country for God's people. They're going to Learn to use the bow. Oh, that's just a simple thing. That's just a little plan. Well, you better plan on teaching your children to use the Bible, to love the Bible, because it will, it will direct their lives. It's not just a little thing. And that little verse, and I mentioned this some weeks ago, because I was reading a book about about uh, the ash tree. And, and on this row here, this, uh, on our driveway, we've got some beautiful maples, but there's also some beautiful ash trees in that. And I mentioned this, um, I believe, in a message some time ago. But in the battle of, I don't know if you pronounce it, Creasy, it's C-R-E-C-Y. In August 1346, 1346, the French invaded England. But England took that little verse, they took that little verse, teach your men to use the bow. They took that little verse from the Word of God, literally. And you might remember me mentioning this. The backs of the churches in England, still today, churches that have stood, these old rock churches, have wear marks in the brick where the men would sharpen their bow. They, they would sharpen their arrows, rubbing them on the backs of the churches. The backs of the churches all had 
target ranges. What do they call those target ranges? They call them, it was a word for it. But they all had uh, these target ranges. And after church, they'd all go out and practice shooting their bow and arrows. You know, shooting, shooting. Well, France invaded England in 1346. And consensus says different historical reports on the battle. And this is all because England planned, according to one little verse in the Bible, it's a wise thing to be prepared. You know, the United States is always, we've always believed they have a strong defense. And, but more and more, we said, no, we don't need that. No, we better, we better have it. But... The consensus of the historians say of the battle, it says, as the French invaded England, 16,500 French were shot down by the arrows of the English, whereas only about 50 English men were killed in the battle. 50 to 16,500. I'd say God bless that they planned. They planned, hey, this little verse, that's smart. Well, we've got verses all through the scriptures telling us to teach our children, to prepare them, to train them. Uh, God help us, because it's going to shape their lives. It says a little note here. Uh, it says, firing at full tilt, the English archers could unleash 12 arrows a minute. And really, like Beric was telling me, uh, it, a good archer can release more than that, a lot more than that. But it says, with 5,000 archers on the field of battle, that is 60,000 arrows going down the battlefield every 60 seconds. 60,000 arrows in the air. And the French didn't have a chance, even though they greatly un outnumbered the English. Uh, just thinking about making plans. So important to make plans. Just to make a plan this year that I am going to study my Bible. I am going to read my Bible. I am going to pray. And I'm going to, it's a plan that I'm going to implement. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to grow. You, gotta, you want to grow in the Lord, continue to grow in the Lord. But according to this passage of Scripture, the first point we want to make uh, in making plans is make plans to serve God in spite of the uncertainties. This passage of Scripture is really, you could say it's about uncertainties. Now, I don't want to be redundant from Wednesday night, which I already am being, but... Make plans to serve God, even if you don't know what's happening next. You do know my plan is to serve God. And you can even be specific to an extent. I mean, Paul knows he's going, okay, I don't know who's going to do it. I don't know when it's going to happen. But we are taking a collection. We are gathering a collection. We are going to give to God. You know, it's like human life is really strange that there's so many things we don't know, but there are so many things we do know that from the Word of God. And so you just plan on it. You plan on it. And the Lord will lead us. And you just keep going on in spite of the uncertainties. I think of my dad, uh, growing up, it's just so many uh, sicknesses that my mother went through that is she going to live, is she going to die? And it wasn't, you know, just one big crisis that a lot of us have had, like, times went, well, this is, looks pretty bad, uh, or we've had friends that this looks really bad, but it was... For years, different things would, health issues would come up. And it's like, 
She going to live through this one? She going to live through this one? You just keep, you keep trusting the Lord through all the uncertainties. So make plans to serve God in spite of uncertainties. Secondly, make plans in light of the truth of the resurrection. I think it's pretty amazing that such a doctrinal passage, like you might say the uh, doctrinal passage, key passage, cornerstone passage, uh, the passage that uh, probably the most important in the New Testament, establishing the witnesses of the resurrection, the power of the resurrection, the truth of the resurrection, is followed by this passage that is full of so many uncertainties. You got the, you've got the most certain thing in the Christian faith, Christ rose from the dead. Put your faith in him, you have eternal life. And to, well, we don't know a good way if I'm going to spend the winter here or do this. Uh, well, I don't know, Paul said, I don't know what. But you make plans knowing that I do know one thing. I've trusted the Lord Jesus. I hope you have. You want to make sure of that, first of all. But you make plans in that. Okay, something happens this year. Uh, you know, God forbid, but if I was killed in a car accident or uh, something happened, I'm going to heaven. My sins are forgiven. I've trusted the Lord Jesus as my Savior. And you make plans in light of the truth of the resurrection. And it's so beautiful you have these verses that we all love. If you back up to verse 51 of chapter 15, where Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, twinkling so, so quick, just like a little shine, a sparkle in your eye, twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So make plans to serve him. Make plans to serve him. That you make plans. You don't just make plans like the world, like, well, this is it, and you just got to try to ring out. Ring, you know, ring out of the world all that you can get. And uh, now you make plans that this isn't it. And I'm accountable to God. And I'm going to see God. And God's been so good to me to give me eternal life. And this mortal is going to put on immortality. And I'm making plans to do all I can to bless God. Bless the Lord O oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I'm just going to serve him with uh, my whole heart. All I've got, this life, James tells us, is but a vapor. Appears for a little while, then passes away. And my plans are in light of the truth of the resurrection. Number three. Making plans for 2022. Make plans to be steadfast and unmovable. Steadfast and unmovable. It's pretty amazing that that verse precedes 
How can you be steadfast and unmovable when you don't know what's going on? Well, you're steadfast on the resurrection. You're steadfast on your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you you love him and uh, you're steadfast that you're clinging to the word of God. You're not moving. Uh, steadfast, unmovable. That is reiterated down. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Apollos was... Uh, I'd have to do a study. What happened to Paul after he told Paul, no, I'm not coming, and I'm just looking for a more convenient time? You can, maybe you study that out. Uh, but it's interesting that after Paul, it's noted that Paul, when, uh, Paul, when he gets a convenient time, he'll come, that Paul says, verse 13, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, Quit ye like men. We live in a day when, I mean, it's not just the preachers that are saying this. Um, there was a woman, there was a book. Uh, I was listening to the radio, and somebody was advertising a book that some woman wrote about American culture and uh, kids not growing up anymore. And it was just, they were given a synopsis of the book and talking about, you know, 25-year-olds uh, uh, still acting like teenagers and uh, not responsible. And Paul has, says here, quit ye like men. Be strong. We says, stand fast in the faith. You just be steadfast, unmovable in the faith. Verse 14, let all your things be done with charity. You know that it's love that keeps us going. You got to have everything, you got to be doing everything in charity. When you get bitter and angry, whether it's at your wife or your boss or the world, whatever you get bitter and angry at, then it's going to it's going to pull you down. Love covers a multitude of sins. You got to be forgiving and loving uh, if you're going to stand fast in the faith. But we're to be unmovable. We have to be steadfast and unmovable. And you, you plan on it. Plan on it for not just 2022. Plan on it for the rest of your life. Be steadfast and unmovable. Also, so important you got to be steadfast, or the devil is going to pull you down. Look in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, and verse 8 says, Be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom, ye, whom he may devour. And then God tells us, whom resist steadfast in the faith. How do you resist the devil? The devil's constantly trying to tear you apart, constantly trying to get you away from serving, serving the Lord. And how do you resist him? Well, I like that this is preceded by our memory verse uh, for this week. Casting all your care upon him. For he care for you. You just keep praying. Also, you, uh, you humble yourself before the Lord, uh, the context tells us. But it says, resist steadfast in the faith. You're not going to stand against the devil and keep serving God if you uh, aren't faithful. Aren't, you, you drop out, you stop coming to church or stop reading your Bible or stop praying. Uh, you're not going to stand against the uh, assaults of the devil, the wiles of the devil. It says, resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Uh, just we're all going to face different afflictions. Different afflictions, but they're the same, uh, same different afflictions uh, of the world. We've got to be steadfast, plan on it. Plan on it. 
they may make plans. I'm planning on uh, probably finishing this message because uh, uh, tonight, instead of waiting until next week, uh, as we come into the next uh, the new year. But make plans to be steadfast and unmovable. Number four, so you make plans, making plans for 2022, and you're thinking, well, uh, those of you that own and run businesses, I'm sure you've been thinking uh, what you have to line up and things you might want to do different this year and and uh, things you got to deal with, whatever all, for 2022. This whole passage uh, revolves around making plans to serve God, work, to work for the Lord. It's so number four is make plans to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. That word abounding, God says he wants us abounding in his work. Abounding. What's that word abounding mean? Well, my uh, strongs on my phone says it means to super, a super abound, to be in excess, in abundance, to excel, to be superfluous. I mean, just as busy, as busy as a bee, busy as a beaver, busy uh, just busy for the Lord. Um, I like how Paul says this uh, uh, one thing I do. You got you to gotta be single-minded. Be on your job, your job, whatever your job may be, whether it's uh, working in the woods or whether it's uh, carpentry or... Um, Res trying to rescue, whatever, rescue lives, whatever, sell insurance, whatever your work may be. You know what the one thing you do? Is you press toward the mark for the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. The one thing you do is you serve the Lord through it all. Uh, even if um, through all the frustrations of trying to work things out, whatever you're working at, the biggest goal is, is to always be abounding in the work of the Lord. Uh, I, I think it's interesting, I think it's interesting that Apostle Paul never, not one time in all the scripture that I can find, I, I, and uh, you can check it out, make sure I'm right. Never mention tent making. Do you know that? He never talked about, this is, this is how I make tents. This is how I put them together. This is what, you know, um, it was Luke in Acts 18 that mentioned that it, it wrote it down historically that Paul had to sometimes resort in his, his work for the Lord that he had to make tents. But that wasn't like, he didn't, in, in, in Ephesians, he didn't say, and eh, tent making is going pretty hard for me. Uh, I'm having difficulties here. And, you know, I've been to, you know, shame on, shame on us pastors, but I've been to pastor's fellowships, not recently, not a long time, not in a long time, but, you know, sit at a table of pastors. We're pastors. They we're all talking about blessings from the Bible, all talking about how great God's word is and how, how the Lord is, is working. No, everybody's sitting there talking about their, their part-time job or their other job that they've uh, they've got to do this and that. Paul never did that. He's so focused on serving the Lord, following the Lord, the work of the Lord, that he never one time talks about his tent making. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing when... Uh, Oh, my brother, my brother uh, was saying that he said, 
he said, you know, you're staying after church, or uh, you get together with a bunch of Christian men, and you talk, 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 talk. And he said, we don't talk about the Bible. We don't talk about the Lord. Talk about sports and hockey and football and, and hunting, and we don't talk about the Lord. I think it's pretty amazing that Paul was always talking, always writing. He's about, it's all about the Lord. It's all about the Lord. Make plans to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. And here Paul, in, in, in spite of all the uncertainties, uh, he's just, it's all about this whole passage is about the work of the Lord. And he wants uh, Timotheus to come and see if, if Timotheus can help out. And what I love when you get down to verse 15, this household of uh, Stephanus. We want to be, uh, God help us to have households like the household of Stephanus. You know what you need to do for 2022? This is just contrary to all what the world says. You need to start an addiction. Start an addiction. Throw that one out of the world and see what they say about that. Start an addiction. The other world's all talking about, you know, I'm going to quit my addiction to Mountain Dew this year. I'm going to quit my addiction to, you know, I'm going to get away from uh, whatever my problem, whatever my bad habit is. Well, this household of Stephanus, you notice that they addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. What a great addiction. What a great thing. And, and Paul says just everybody needs to get involved and, and help out uh, serving the Lord. But this, this family was such a blessing that they just wanted to serve the saints do whatever they could, and they um, just encouraged Paul so much. Make plans. Make plans to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. Uh, this last one we'll mention this morning. We'll mention a few of these tonight. And But as you make plans for 2000. 22, uh, make plans to give faithfully and liberally. We mentioned this Wednesday night, how this uh, goes from the resurrection to giving. And it goes like from the doctrinal to the practical. And what can be more practical? What can be giving is such a great Thing that the Lord has allowed us to be involved in. Uh, you people know because I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Uh, last week, because uh, it was right after the COVID, and we had a, a really small group here, and I don't know, somehow there was $1,600 in the offering plate. Somehow, I don't know. But... Um, to be to give to give to God's work is such a huge, huge blessing. And this Paul's Paul's writing out his plans here and and just being transparent on trying to get everything to work together. But as we've already said, it is his plan that they're gonna be involved in giving. They're all going to they're going to work together and give and give um, the whole passage. The whole passage centers around this this plan and working it together to give. And I got a where did I put it? Right here. I got a Christmas present from Holly. Because she said, I always, I, she says, you always quote that verse. So she had it. Uh, Barrett's mother, 
made it for me. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You know what that last part means? You know what it means? That if you don't dish it out, it's not going to be coming back to you. It is as you give the Lord, the Lord blesses you. It, it goes right along with, if you uh, turn over to 2 Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly you know if you only put a few seeds in the ground you're only going to get a few plants you throw all that out there then you get a lot he which soweth sparingly we know that this also uh, applies to our witnessing uh, Ecclesiastes 11 applied it to sowing the word. Um, in, it, uh, the Lord tied it all together. Uh, that passage in John 3.16, the wind bloweth where it listeth, uh, comes from Ecclesiastes 11, and which also talks about the sowing. It's, it is also involved in soul winning. He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as, his pur as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Cheerfulness and giving. Oh, you're not talking about giving. All that preacher talks about is giving. We don't, we just approach it as it comes up in a passage. Um, I don't know if I've done a topical message on giving, just giving for years. We just go through a passage when it comes up. Uh, we don't harp on giving. We just try to present it as it comes up in the Lord's word. But it is a huge blessing to be involved in giving. And make plans for 2022 just to give. Give to the Lord uh, in every way you can. And we have a few more points. I've got three more points for tonight. And hope that... You can make it back, and let's pray.